Let me introduce the parts I used in building my permanent magnet bicycle generator. The key to this assembly is the, the hub here. I used a freewheel hub for the back wheel of the uh, mountain bike that I'll be using. And I found a hub flange which has a bore that's exactly the same diameter as the diameter of the freewheel hub. So what I did in the freewheel hub is I notched a keyway and used this half inch square aluminum bar as the key. And so when the uh, freewheel hub rotates, the key allows the uh, flange hub to rotate as well. And in the flange hub, I've got four uh, bolts which I use to mount the rotors. The rotors um, have two types. Uh, both rotors have a steel disc. And on this uh, stat uh, excuse me, on this rotor here, the magnets are mounted. I have permanent magnets, uh, 12 of them for a 12 pole alternator. Uh, of course, the, the poles will alternate, um, which is why it's an alternator. The um, magnets are held in place by a piece of wood here, which I've bolted uh, into the steel disc. Um, if I had enough clearance, which I don't, I would have done the same thing on the other steel disc. But as I don't have enough clearance, this steel disc is used to concentrate the flux lines across the coils which sit in the center. Um, what that means is that the flux lines will, will go from the uh, magnet over to the steel disc here uh, to concentrate and give um, more, of a, a, a more of an even feel going across the coils. Using the disc here, it improves the power by 40%. Uh, is, if I, well, in tests that I did with and without this second um, uh, iron disc. So what I've done here is I've used washers and nuts as spacers so that I can uh, uh, have the proper uh, distance um, from the magnets to where the stator coil will sit in the middle here and then the other steel disc will sit uh, on top of these nuts. There's enough pull in the magnets to keep the uh, iron disc, the, the, the steel disc, on these nuts without having to attach uh, nuts on the other side. So what I've also got here is a seven speed cassette, which uh, once the rotors are on, I'll mount here on the freewheel hub. Moving over to the stator, and this is a uh, three phase uh, stator. Uh, each phase has three coils, and each coil is made of 12 gauge copper wire, uh, 42 turns. And what I've done is configured this in a star configuration. I don't know if you can see through the plastic here. But all three coils have their start ends um, connected here within the, within the plastic for safety. And then I've got the other ends of each of the coils coming out here. And those coils have quick connect on the uh, ends of them to go over to the uh, voltage rectifier. And the voltage rectifier is three phase. Uh, you can see the terminals here, one, two, three. Uh, for the input and then output here goes to this 9 gauge uh, cable which will go uh, to whatever uh, power usage I have, whatever load I'll be using. Then I've got some mounting hardware for the stator. The stator will be mounted in the frame to float it between the two rotors. Um, I have four connecting rods, uh, threaded rods, uh, each with um, washers here to go against the stator and then they'll be held in place by these butterfly nuts which allow me to easily uh, slide the stator along the pole, uh, along the rod, to give me the proper clearance between the magnets or the rotors and the stator. So that's it. Those are the parts that I'll be using and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all put together.